from Italy, Dolomiti, Passo Mauria, welcome to the GCN show. Welcome to the GCN show! Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, we have got a new bike, Bonanza. We've got more of your epic endurance rides, and we wrap up all of the biggest racing news as well. We have got more mind-bending hacks and bodges. We announce the latest winner from GCN's unboxing, and we have a truly inspirational extreme corner. Fingers crossed. You're not allowed to enter it. Sorry, mate. You, ha you haven't won. It is strange sometimes how the bike industry tends to work. We wait here for ages for a new bike to come along. Then in the space of a week, we get four. And they all seem to be along the same mold as well. That very versatile endurance all-road gravel bikes. Hmm. Yeah, last year, seemed to be the year of aero. We had a new Trek with Don. We had the Specialized Venge Vice and we had a new Scott Foil. 2016 though, that does seem to be the year of the endurance epic all-road gravel bike. To be honest with you, that sounds like a little bit of a mouthful to me. I think we should take yeah. a lead from friend of the channel, Kaylee Freds of Velo News, and call them Grode Bikes. Yeah, yeah. That works yeah. for me. We could do, but I don't think that encompasses all the features of some of these new bikes. So how about Endural Grode? <laughs> Endural Grode. <sighs> that just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, I think you might have hit the nail on the head there, mate. Although, you say Endural Grode, actually these bikes, these bikes are aero as well. Serious. Okay, so check this one out. The first one, the Canyon Endurace CF SLX. There it is. The first ever disc specific bike from Canyon. And I think that is a thing of beauty. Mm -hmm. yeah. But not just beautiful, aero as well. Look, even it's down to an integrated aero one piece bar and stem, the kind that is almost identical to the ones on our aero. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. And Canyon have actually done some testing in the wind tunnel with this new bike. And they claim it only adds 1.5 watts of extra drag compared to the prototype Ultimate Disc. Now, some of this extra drag is down to a taller head tube at the front, but some of it is down to that cool, flexible seat post. More good news as well, it only weighs 7.3 kilograms, Whoa. very respectable, and you can fit up to 33C wide tyres in it. That's pretty mm. cool. Comfy. Well, indeed. Well, next up is the first ever bike from 3T, a yeah. manufacturer more commonly known for making bars, stems, and seat posts. Now, Gerard Ruman, the founder of Cervelo, has recently bought into the company, and if you take a look at this, his influence is plain to see. Mm. Yeah, now of all the bikes here, this, the Exploro, it just sounds like a superhero or a supervillain, doesn't it? <laughs> I do like that name. Yeah, that is quite, yeah, that is a good point, actually. Exploro. <laughs> <laughs> this, the 3T Exploro, is probably the most gravelly of all the bikes here. The clearance is massive, so it'll fit 40C wide tyres on, on a standard road rim, so 700C rim, but this is the piece of resistance. It'll fit 650B rims with basically mountain bike tyres on there. Oh. Yeah, uh, but it also, also Aero as well, and they tested it at slower speeds. So not the usual 45k an hour that you get on road stuff. They actually did it down at 20 miles an hour. So I like wondered where you were last week, testing stuff at slow speeds. Just very, very slowly indeed. So, since it's Aero as well, Aero Enduro Grode? Exploro. Yeah, well maybe you better check out some more of these bikes later on, mate. Yeah. They do sound pretty fun though, don't they? They do sound it's good. It's the future and the present all rolled into one. Present? <laughs> no, stop that. <laughs> Time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week. And this week, Dom has chosen two of his fellow countrymen in the form of Maxime Bouet and Julian Alaphilippe of Etix Quickstep. It's actually Maxime Bouet who tweeted this. He says, Joyeux anniversaire à mon pote, which translated means happy birthday to my mate. I really do not know what's going on in the background, but Maxime Bouet does look to be in a little bit of pain. Yeah, but I don't see why that's happy birthday. No, it's odd, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, very strange. Can mm. you explain it? Yeah. Uh, Dom has also chosen one of our own tweets yeah. at the Global Cycling Network. Yeah. He said, if we get 1,000 GCN fans to like this post, we'll make a very, very limited edition Tom Last t-shirt. And thankfully, more than 1,000 of you did like it, so on their way, are some limited edition Tom Last t-shirts. I can't wait to get my hands on one. I liked it as well, you know. I think you would do a signed one for us. I've already got a signed one. Serious. It's Cam. It's Cap. It's Cap. Right. 
Sorry? It's caption competition time now, and last week's photo was this one of Bertie with a lion on the podium. And the winner is Matthew Geraghty, who said caption competition, Alberto Contaroa. Very good. Yeah, Can't argue with that. Very, that's that is genius, good punning. Right yeah, get in touch right. and we shall send you your swag. Now next up, we've got this. It's a picture of Fabio Aru in full descent mode at last week's Dauphiné. Simon? Take I'm away. getting quite nervous actually about this. Yeah. Oh, right. What do you mean, why am I riding like this? They wouldn't give me a Venge Vias. Got to make up for this tarmac somehow. That's good, mate. Nice oh, thanks. Nice. Cheers, uh, mate. The, the winner. If you think thanks. you can compete against Cy, but also against your fellow viewers, then leave your captions in the comment section just down below. It's that time of the week that you all look forward to as you find out if you have won the latest GCN unboxing. <laughs> Three winners this week as we're giving away physique saddles. You ready for this? I am a bit, a bit, bit nervous. <laughs> the winner, sorry mate, you can probably relax. The winner of the Aliante is Patrick Yao from Hong Kong. The winner of the Arione is Monte Luciano well from the Philippines. And the winner of the Antares is, you ready for this? Mm, Ronald Deckers from oh, Belgium. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Very well done, done to all of you. And don't yeah, forget to enter this week's unboxing, which is for a pair of Vision Metron 40 wheels. Oh. Either rim brake or disc brake, they your are choice. Very nice indeed. Nice Just only a few it. fingerprints on them, nothing worse than that. Don't think I'll bother. Chris Froome sent an ominous message to all his rivals, present or not, by winning the Criterium de Dauphiné for the third time overall and crucially both times he's won the event previously he has then gone on to win the tour de france six weeks later mm. yeah it was an absolute cracking race and dan martin made history by becoming the first irishman to finish on the podium in the dauphiné leapfrogging poor old richie port on yeah. the final stage richie port yeah. got blocked in in the finale and actually dropped right out of the podium places oh. and uh, chapeau as well to roman bardet who finished second overall after leaving a chunk of time on stage two through a crash Bad day. Yeah, I noticed day. that. Yeah. Bad day. There were some very strong stage wins too, notably from Fabio Aru and also Thibaut Pino, yeah. who wasn't climbing that well earlier on in the week. However, the most epic stage win has to go to Steve Cummings of Dimension Data, who on the very final day yeah. broke clear of his breakaway with almost 60 k's remaining and held on to almost a four minute advantage over those guys by the finish line. I'd like to see that power file, would you? Yeah, oh, incredible. Yeah. In fact, it was an amazing week all round for Team Dimension Data. They took back the polka dot jersey of Daniel Tekla-Hemino. They also had the green jersey with Edvard Bersenhagen, who had also taken a stage win earlier in the week. Can you imagine if you'd not left the team? I know. They'd have just they'd probably won it overall. Yeah, that's a good point. Not there. That's a, yeah, Froome, probably thanking his lucky I know. Stars, yeah, he didn't have to send me a message. Yeah, I haven't lost it yet. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> Home fans were delighted this weekend at the Tour of Switzerland when Fabian Cancellara scorched to victory in the opening 6.4 km time trial to take the yellow jersey. Ah, of course, it's his last appearance in that race ever, which is a bit sad. Yeah. The following day, Peter Sagan showed yet another clean pair of hills in the rainbow jersey by taking the bunch sprint, but the leader of the race going into stage three is Jürgen Rodelands of Lotto, who made the split in the bunch, which Fabian Cancellara unfortunately missed. Julian Dorr won the Flanders Diamond Cup in a bunch sprint, whilst over in the Alsteiner Randsportage, Cervelo Biglis Ashley Moorman, who took the overall, she was second to Annemiek van Vluten in Stage 2A's individual time trial, but then she smashed the afternoon's road stage to win solo by minute 39. Well, wow, impressive. that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, both Moorman and Dorr eh, will be taking part in the Aviva Women's Tour of Britain this week, which is going to be a cracking race, I think, and our preview is out for it now. It's got yeah. a totally stacked field, cracking field, isn't it? Yeah. New bikes then, and we've still got two beauties to show you. Now, first up is this from Focus called the Paralane. Now, on the Endural Grode sliding scale of things, this comes in more on the off-road capable side of the spectrum because it can fit 35C tires. Is it but a cross bike there? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think it would be. So in order to get the more relaxed position that you'd expect from this kind of bike, Focus have lengthened the head tube a little bit. They've lengthened the forks a little bit, yep. but they've increased the bottom bracket drop, which I don't think would be right for cyclocross. But I bet it handles pretty well on tarmac corners hmm. though. Yeah, I bet it would go around corners very quickly on the road. Uh, one of the most exciting things though about it is that it comes with its very own bespoke mud guards. So Ooh. perfect for those long, wet winter days. And it's also not heavy. In fact, it's very light. 907 grams is all it weighs for wow. the frame when it's unpainted carbon. That's, that's pretty light. It's very light. Now, finally, because we're all getting just a little bit biked up, <laughs> out, up, is this from BMC. I mean, they're calling it the One Bike Collection. Now, it's not strictly true because it's got disc brakes, so it can't be raced, but it really does have some lovely features. It does. I'm particularly enamored with its front end. 
I thought that too, first look. Yeah, so it's got a very innovative headset spacer setup. So it will have a long, low, racy position, but then it can also have a more relaxed, endural grade position without looking like you've got a monster stack of spacers on there. But then, this is the master stroke. BMC engineers deserve a pat on the back for this. They've managed to create a stem that will integrate the hydraulic brake hoses that will then go down through the fork steerer. So if you look closely, you can't see them. Wow. So how good is that? Imagine endural grode aero. If I imagine integrate. sticking a SRAM ETAP oh. HRD group set on that. That would look No clean. junction box, no wires. How neat and clean would that look? Very cool. Tire clearance, I hear you ask. Well, the top end models have got 30C clearance and the lower end models have got 32C clearance, but they've also got mudguard and pannier rack mounts too. I tell you what, that's a lot of bikes for one week, should we? Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. move on. To another hack, forward slash. Bodge of the week straight in. We've got this from Eric Schenk in Germany, which has spotted the Iron Man. It's a handmade carbon frame. I mean, amazing craftsmanship. That's, that is yeah. a definite hack, isn't That's it? That's amazing. Disc brake at the back, rim brake at the front. But yeah. fair play, he's had a go. It and obviously we works. certainly couldn't do that. There's a lot of carbon no there as well. That's the biggest head tube I've ever Indeed. seen. Right now, we've got Guy de Gouville, who uh, has. Well, he's got a worn out disc brake rotor, so rather than put it in the bin, he stuck some cork on the bottom and has made a coaster. Just watch out, if you do do that, that you don't get cut, because those disc brake rotors are yeah. dangerous, can't they? Yeah, and they can get hot. Well, you could use them to cut your your cake and then put your teapot on it. Right, my so. first hack, forward slash bodge, is a chain keeper. We've had loads yeah, sent in. This yeah. one came in from Gilles Champagne, who said a chain keeper thanks to a fishing line spool from a local sports store and a bolt from home. That does look very neat, I think. As far as chain keepers go, that's relatively exciting. <laughs> yeah. But still, it is a chain keeper. So there's only one man here who's excited. Well, next up, we've got this from Dream Cycling Team at Dream Cycle Team. And it's a very efficiently and aerodynamically adhered number. It looks like he's used gaffer tape to put his number on, but that is certainly very aero. Uh, Alex Dowse would be proud of that one. Is that a hack or a bodge? I think that's probably a hack, actually. Yeah. Unless it was because he'd forgotten his hack. pins, in which yeah. case it's a bodge, but I think that's a pretty good hack. Aero, though. Well, this yeah. one is definitely a hack. It came in from Sam Logan. As you can see, he has fashioned a bike trailer to use on a bike, to carry bikes, out of bike racks. It's amazing. That is pretty cool. I don't know why you'd ever need one of those. But still, that is brilliant. That is a genuine If hack. you do it sure. one, it won't get better than that, will it? Yeah. All right, so let's finish off this week with one of the more peculiar what bodges I've ever seen. <laughs> Eric Stefaniak going on? has got a picture there of a bike with no tyre. It's a tyre prototype, he reckons. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it certainly is a well, prototype. Is, that actually, is, it, is he wrapped tyres that way around the rim? I reckon that's puncture proof. I reckon it might be quite uncomfortable. That's you definitely need an all-road aero there's gravel There's several bike little zip ties holding it in comfy. place. I mean, that is really is something to right. hold. We better leave Bodge. it there. Yeah. So if you've got any more suggestions for next week, though, the hashtag is GCN Hack, and we look at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Keep them coming. Yeah, we are loving this, particularly that last one. It's amazing. What is that? It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Let's start Cycling Shorts with the news that world road champion Peter Sagan is going to be racing in the Olympic mountain bike race after a little bit of selection jiggery pokery. Yeah, so the backstory, figuring that he would probably struggle to medal on the very climbing orientated road race, he's decided to swap to a discipline in which he was a former junior mm. world champion, but also the big hitters in mountain biking have said he has no chance of winning medal there either. But I say, just count Peter Sagan at your peril. I think he's worth a fiver. Yeah, I yeah. would tend to agree with you there, Si. Now, there's no doubt it's going to be difficult for him to prepare in time after the Tour de France. He's only got four weeks to get his muscles used to very slightly different efforts. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be very exciting to watch. It will be brilliant. Well, from one challenge to another, we've had a lot of amazing ideas come in after last week. But this one from Patrick Borg was certainly intriguing. Yeah. Secondly, a little bit dangerous, but apparently some guy is going to attempt to ride for the whole length of Sweden on zero calories. Now, from my rough calculations off the top of my head, it's about 1,500 kilometers. A little over at the longest point. You're, you're think, right. Yeah, no. yeah that, that sounds crazy. quite dangerous, something we wouldn't recommend. No. Maybe we could it, add it to last year's list of challenges. Yeah, can you write that down, sorry? Cal yeah. Calorie free. Yeah. Calorie free. Yet another numbers. epic endurance challenge currently taking place is the Trans America in America, and early leader Sarah Hammond is now trailing in third place. She's 100 miles behind the current new leader, who is Stefan Strike. Now, he's done 1,990 miles out of 4,400, which make up the Trans-American Trail. 
Still, that has only taken him nine days, and I had a little look at the cross-sectional profile. It turns out that once you get past Colorado, it's pretty much downhill from there. Good geography skills. Yeah, thanks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, now moving away from endurance stuff, um, let's check in with pro racing, shall we? Because the title sponsor of Green Edge, the mining company Orica, have announced, unfortunately, they are pulling out of pro cycling as of the end of 2017. It's been a successful few years for them, but hopefully this gives Orica Green Edge, or Green Edge, plenty of time to find a new supporter. Mm. So fingers crossed that they do. No, definitely. Well, in more transfer news, although we're still six weeks away from the official UCI date to announce transfers, which is August the 1st, the rumour mill is in full swing. Now get this, there's rumour that Michael Matthews will be leaving Orica Green Edge and heading over to Giant Alpacin. Really? Okay. And he then does have nice hair, doesn't he? He does have great hair and they are a team renowned for their hair. And Obviously he's going to get a lot of shampoo when he goes to that team, assuming that Alpacin Stoneboard is a sponsor, which mm. I believe they will. Also John Degenkolb moving to Trek Segafredo, along with potentially Alberto Contador, Whoa. who is in talks this week with the US team. It's a big one. Fascinating. I do love the old rumour mill which starts about now before that UCI it, yeah. deadline. Oh, um, it's even better than uh, the actual news itself, it is. isn't it really? Yeah, it rumor. could be a long one this year as well with Tinkoff going and a couple yeah. of teams pulling out. I am going It's going to be all over the what? place. The marketplace is awash. Well, some racing news now with a slight twist. This was a story which came up in British newspaper, the Daily Mirror. They were talking about a 55-year-old Alison Carrick who was out on her bike for the first time in years just doing a Sunday jaunt, when all of a sudden she found herself caught up in the middle of a triathlon race. <laughs> well, she said she noticed it was a triathlon when she realised that all the cyclists with numbers on their back were wet. And it wasn't raining. Yeah, and potentially we might have noticed a bit earlier when they were all wearing Speedos, compression socks and arm warmers and nothing else. But still, you know, it probably takes an expert to notice that, isn't it? And amazingly, urged on by the crowd, she finished the 21k route as well. She did a race. astonishing, yeah. Wow. Well done. Right. Well, talking of routes to complete. Oh, nice segue. Yeah. Sir Dave Brailsford, the team manager at Team Sky, has recently had two routes in his native North Wales named after him. Now, we haven't had any confirmation about where Team Sky's training camps will take place at the start of 2017, but Brailsford Way is open to one and all, and in one of the most beautiful places in the world to ride a bike to. Mm. Actually, I understand that you two have done some training camps there in the past. Spent several we weeks up in that neck of the woods. It's beautiful if you're ever in, uh, in the UK, yeah. get over to Wales. I'm surprised they they've not called way. it the Stevens Way, actually, because uh, there's one climb on there where Matt unfortunately lost a pair of Oakleys in uh, 1989. No. Yeah, they're probably still there. I think yeah. the sheep's probably still wearing them. Well, they'll be going up in value now. I know. Yes, yeah, true, actually. Collector's item. Retro only Matt Stevens' sheep retro shades. shades. <laughs> <laughs> if you were wearing hats, I'd ask you to hold on to them. Why? Because it's time for the weekly wattage bazooka! <laughs> There you go. Thanks for your enthusiasm, lads. That's no right, they were pretty enthusiastic, mate. You sure? But it's yeah. a cracking one this week, and it goes to, for the pros, Fabio Aru. Whoa. For his victory on stage three of the Dauphiné, that demon descent, and holding off the bunch. Absolutely astonishing. What yeah. an effort by Aru. I mean, despite the fact that we had literally just the day before said that he was creeping and had no form. He did a latter. At least Pino has shown some good form so far in 2016. Aru True. really hasn't performed at all well so far this year, has he? And the Tour de France really is now looming. He went out, proved us wrong, and held off the sprinters' teams on a downhill to flat yeah. running. Indeed. Not bad for a skinny little dude. A very good effort. Now, the non-pro wattage bazooka was nominated this week by Bailey Wilmot. Hmm. And the person he nominated is Adam Hartley. And well it's very Adam. worthy as well. He broke quite an old, reasonably old, 10-mile time trial record held by Ryan Mullen, who's now with the Cannondale team, of the junior record for 10 miles. He set an average speed of 32 miles per hour to give him a time of 18 minutes and 44 seconds. How fast is that? That's some well, serious. Well, I just said, it's 32 miles an hour, but it's very fast. That's some that serious wattage bazooka for That's, a youngster. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a medium range wattage bazooka now, isn't it? Yeah. Or 10 miles, yeah. Don't we forget can... your nominations for next week using this hashtag. I'm, I'm going to write his name down because I think that's one to watch. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam Hartley. Hartley. Adam Hartley. It's time now for comment of the week, and there have been some absolute belters. All of this lot actually come from underneath last week's show. There are some real crackers, as Simon said. The first one is from Laurel Run. Laurel Run, that's twice. Uh, watched this a day late and had to laugh as you panned Aru's fitness given his win today. GCN curse in reverse? Yeah, mm. that's probably not far on. Well, Mike Walton wrote in to say, 30 days in the same pair of shorts, schoolboy stuff. I can proudly boast a trans-Australian trip from 23rd of January to the 12th of March in 2015. Uh, from Hobart all the way to Western Australia in the middle of summer, peaking Whoa. at 47 degrees in one pair of shorts oh. and one jersey. 
I don't know whether to say hats off to you, Mike, or shorts off. Or shorts off, yeah. definitely shorts off. To be fair, off. maybe, okay. maybe they got that infested with bacteria that they actually created their own kind of antibiotics. Or lubricant it became as well. kind of, yeah, <laughs> it just became antibacterial. Yeah. Antibacterial support. So, yeah, so there is always that threat. Mm. But anyway, finally, we've got Nathaniel Friedman, who says, I feel a bit sorry for him. When you announced the Reynolds contest winner, I fell out of my chair from disbelief to hear my first name called was astonishing. I was then devastated to realise that it was not me, in fact, and it was someone from Canada. How many other Nathaniels watched GCN? I've well, really I can it. tell you there was a third one who wrote to us genuinely on Facebook to ask if we mispronounced his surname. No! So I'm very oh. sorry for anyone that's got the same first name as any of our competition winners, but we did last week get it right. Yeah. I thought it. Three Nathaniels at once. Yeah, hopefully you win the vision wheels. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, how to get started with a power meter. Now, all different types of power meters will require different things in order to calibrate them. And some, in fact, don't require any calibration at all. But it's really important that you understand what your specific power meter requires, because the last thing you want is for it to be giving you misleading readings. And on Thursday, we've got five custom shoes from the Pro Peloton. Mm. Friday, we've got double whammy, ask GC anything, and also a real-time descent of Sacalobra mm. over in Mallorca. That was fun. And then Saturday's Pro Bike is Joey Roscoff's BMC. Yeah, Sunday, we tell you how to race harder with our Pro Nutrition Tips, but we also have another very, very cool unboxing video for you. And then on Monday, we explain helmet safety standards, including a little known Japanese one where they test for hair oil resilience. Wow, I could, Whoa. I yeah, yeah, I'm so. definitely going to tune in for that one. Yeah, yeah, what absolutely. What time is it on? Uh, Monday. Thank you. Anytime you want. Thank you. After about oh, six. Oh, YouTube. U UK time. Sorry. <laughs> it's time now for Extreme Corner. And this week, we have a genuinely, brilliantly extreme and also quite inspirational film for you. We've been sat on this for weeks and I can't wait to have it in Extreme Corner. I'd say not quite inspirational, extremely inspirational. It's amazing. Well, how we done there? Thank you. <laughs> he looks like he's having a good time in there, never too stressed about results, but today I think it might be a different story. Oh, oh it's a mistake! Ashton goes down! Ashton goes down! Outside assistance, he may get DQ for that. Stand your bait, Martin! <laughs> That's that, brilliant. That yeah, is I really amazing. That. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you've not seen it yet, you need to watch it. You also need to share it with your mates too. It's down, not out, with Martin Ashton. You can find it by clicking just up there. Yeah. Now, we talked earlier on about the Women's Aviva Tour of Britain. So if you want to see our preview show, then if you click just down there, then you go straight through to it. Yeah. Now, last year made me look stupid last week, but hopefully the glow will be here. Click on that and you can subscribe for free. What are the chances of it being where you want them to be? <laughs> if you do this, it's actually in 3D. If you've got Oculus Rift on, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs>